Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel and happy spring to everyone. As you know, spring is our repotting season. So let's get into some repots for today. Today's gonna be a nice and chill video. Um, I am currently in between jobs, so I will have a lot of time <laughs> to do videos now. And I thought, why not just record everything? And me, I'm not a big repotter, so I do understand that repotting is something that's necessary. It's gonna happen and you know, every year or two, every couple of years, your plants are gonna need new medium or new potting mix uh, once the old one starts degrading or once the roots start to fill the pot. Again, I have a couple of examples of different reasons why these plants are going to be repotted. And we do have a house plant today, so that's going to be interesting. I never recorded uh, repotting a house plant, and I'm also putting it in uh, my orchid mix, which is just bark and sphagnum. It's not specifically orchid mix, but since I primarily grow orchids in this mix, I do call it an orchid mix. So let's jump into this repotting what are we gonna start with hmm actually let's start with an easy one so for this fowl this one here that's in bloom we're not necessarily changing much we are just going to actually move the plant out of its nursery cup and place it into the decorative pot with no drainage. <laughs> I know it's a bit controversial, but if you learn how to water adequately, um, this can be very beneficial for an environment such as mine that lacks humidity. So what I like to do is just test and see if the moss is good. And you know, in my experience with buying most of these, the moss is pretty good. So here we have a couple of bad roots, um, but for the most part, this moss is good. A bit compact, a bit compacted, so we can pull some of that apart and some of that that's in the middle apart. I don't like to remove everything because for me, see, there's not a lot of dead roots here. So if the orchid is used to this setup, then I'm just going to keep it going. It just looks like some of these roots ran out of space and eventually uh, a way to get to moisture and humidity because they were so far away or maybe just too suffocated in that plastic uh, casing. So what you want to do is just remove any of these papery roots. Oh, the dogs are back. Just remove any of these papery roots and keep any of the fresh moss. So yeah, see all these roots that are thin and papery away away. And this, I'm doing this gentle uh, up pot or repot because um, this plant is pretty new. It's still in bloom, but it's drying out oddly quick and there's so much moss in here. So I'm thinking that there are areas that aren't um, loose enough to uptake water and nutrients properly. So there we go. I'm just gonna loosen that up a bit. Now, when this goes out of bloom, I will probably do a full repot and just remove everything. But for now, I'm just gonna put this right back in here. So we'll put some of the moss that's in here back in here so I can enjoy the rest of the bloom cycle and see if the flower will give me more blooms. So nice and fluffy in there, not compact. And just push it down onto medium. Looks like I can actually pull a little more in there. And then push down nice and gently. And I like to put one part of the plant against the back of the pot so there's less space I have to maneuver. So push down and put that to the back. And now we have space towards the front to add in the rest of the medium. And again, I'm not changing the medium. Uh-oh, we got some string in here from something. <laughs> I'm not changing the medium. I am just reusing it into the same pot. Well, a slightly larger pot so that we can get 
at maximum moisture retention going with summer around the corner. So here in good old Las Vegas, we're gonna have temperatures in the 90s by next week. They're not too stable yet, so we're still dipping pretty low. I think well into the 60s and 70s following our small spike into the 90s, but just the fact that we're already creeping up there and we're not even necessarily in May yet, I'm just trying to be ready. So here we go, moss, moss, moss. Make sure your orchid is um, nice and snug in there. Again, my favorite analogy is it shouldn't feel like skinny jeans. It should feel like slim fit jeans in your pot. Okay, so push down on the sides there. And towards the top of the pot, I like to be very loose with the moss. So I actually don't squeeze it down because the water will compress it eventually. So just a little loose and then bark to cover the top. So the bark on the top is something I learned from Miss Orchid Girl because it keeps the algae buildup down. And I don't know if algae buildup is beneficial or not. It's still something I'm sort of um, learning about as I go, but I know I don't like the appearance of it. And because I grow under grow lights and most of my collection is consistently con exposed to a constant medium light, I don't want to take any chances. All right, so we'll put this over here. Probably give that a little, a bit of a water later once I add my fertilizer in, I just have to find it. So the next plant that we'll be repotting is my, that last one, by the way, was a store-bought uh, fowl, no ID. This one is called a Sogo Vivian, so it's pretty popular because of these variegated leaves. Uh, Sogo Vivian Cultivar Leaf's Edge. I believe this is from a nursery in Chicago called Hauserman's. So I'm repotting this because I don't see any progression in the roots. So I'm going to change the medium a bit and add some more bark to see if the root, excuse me, and add some more bark to see if the roots are going to take hold. See, I used to put rocks on the bottom of my cup for like weight and drainage, but I don't like doing that anymore. And again, I'm gonna reuse most of this medium because a lot of these uh, plants were just repotted during my move. Um, when I, you know, I moved actually my entire fowl collection into moss and I moved everything into plastic cups since plastic was the best moisture retaining um, sort of pot that you could house your plant in or grow your plant in, sort of say. And let's just take all these dead roots off. I knew there were going to be dead roots on this plant because it just, I could see like one root for two months in the pot, not dying, but just not growing. So I just, I feel that it's not enjoying the medium. So we're gonna mix it up and throw some bark in here. And there's a new root that's coming out. So I'm gonna give it some fresh medium or a new setup, so to say. So I'm gonna be reusing the same moss, but we're gonna be adding some small bark to it. And we're also reusing the same cup. So I'm a little iffy about this root here because the main portion that's connected to the orchid is, it's hard, but it's soft around the edges. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll repot it and leave it on the top so I can see it. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I'll leave that root on, but what I'll do is I'll keep it toward the top of the pot so I can monitor it and see where it's going. Yeah, so this moss actually isn't bad. It just isn't the best quality and it's mixed with some of the good quality moss. So let's put some of that in the bottom. I like moss at the bottom of my cup, something that I also learned from Miss Orchid Girl because if you can connect it through the cup or through the pot, starting from the bottom, 
you can get an even distribution of moisture pretty well throughout the cup. So I like to add some bark in, and then there's a strand of moss that's connected to the bottom. I just wanna add in some more moss to make sure it stays connected. And then more bark. And we gotta expose some of the moss. There we go. And add in some more. That is overload. So add in some more moss. And I'll do a little more moss just to connect it across the pot. Cause it's sticking up on that side there. So I wanna just connect it across the pot. And more bark. And we can put the orchid in now. Especially since I wanna keep this root up here exposed. I hope my dogs aren't making too much noise for the video. I don't think you sh should be able to hear them too much over my dark voice. Yeah, so let's add some more moss in here with the bark I just threw in and then more bark. So this is sort of uh, a 50-50 ratio since the switch is so drastic. We're going from completely moss to moss and bark, which is gonna be a lot more airy. So I don't wanna do too much of one thing because my normal mixture setup is about 70-30. I normally use, mm, I don't measure, but when I, in the end, when I pot it up, I normally notice that I use about 70% bark and 30% sphagnum moss on most of my mixture setups. So let's add some more moss around the base and then bark this all the way up. And I love, I know I mentioned this before, but I love small gray bark because it fills in all the gaps and it holds moisture very well while still retaining a good flow of aeration, especially with the chunks of perlite. So that allows me to pot it pretty high, which is something that you normally don't do for a fowl. But again, in my environment where you lack humidity, you sort of have to tweak your methods to your madness. All right, so Sogo Vivian is now all potted up. Let's give her a water immediately. No, I will wait to find my fertilizer. So let's put her over here. I think she had a decorative pot that she sat in. Maybe not anymore. So the next one is gonna be, oof. so this is one of my favorite fowls. As you can see, um, it has extremely mottled leaves and there are quite a few uh, plants in the pot. This was a, Doritis pulcherima variation mamorata. And it was, it used to be its own species, purchased from high desert orchids. Uh, miss them. It used to be its own species, but now it is a phalaenopsis, which is why Doritis is in parentheses. So every time I see this, I think Doritos. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's now just a phalaenopsis pulcherima, and this variation is called mamorata which means that it has these beautiful mottled leaves. And I wish I had some good sunlight. Unfortunately, I do have a completely north-facing apartment. In good sunlight, the leaves sparkle. And I think this has been in this setup. Oh man, is that like mold? We might have to soak this in Fizan before we repot. So um, I do water systematically every couple of waterings with um, something called Fizan 20 that I dilute into my water about a teaspoon per gallon and it helps to keep bacteria fungus and things like that from growing in the pot but maybe this was staying wet for just too long and this is why I want to get it out of this I think it's been in this moss for almost two years if I'm not mistaken so yeah let's get it out of all of this and I don't want to actually mix any of this So give me a second, we'll come back with a bag to dump all this stuff in, ugh. All right, take two. So we're back and I decided to also get my fertilizer, 
which is a slow release fertilizer that I use in all of my orchids. Let's see here. So I like to just pour that at the top of a fresh repotting before I water. So that when I water, it settles in accordingly. And again, unfortunately, I don't measure anymore. I used to. I used to do about maybe an eighth of a teaspoon per four inch pot, um, or I guess per four inches in the pot. All right, so let's give these a nice watering before we start our repot. Okay, I hear you, boy. One moment while I open the cabinet for his water. Very, very vocal dog. <laughs> My older dog uh, isn't vocal, but that's Oscar, everyone. And Charlie is somewhere around here. Yeah, Oscar is very vocal and he will whine or do like a little mumble under his breath if he wants something. And I don't know what he wants right now. He probably wants attention, I don't know. But I'm gonna see how far I can get ignoring him. <laughs> it's okay, boy. All right, so we are going to discard the medium from this orchid. And also, again, this is several orchids. This is several uh, cakeys that have grown off the mother plant. So we're just going to take all this medium off because it's going in a, a larger pot with a mix of moss and bark, and it will have more moss because this plant is used to living in a very, very moisture retentive setting. Because as you can see, most of the roots on here are pretty good. One moment, let me just tend to my dog. All right, so they are now comfortably laying down. That didn't take too long. Just had to set the bed up for them. The bed was, uh, I guess, in the spot that they didn't prefer. Because <clears throat> now they're both laying down and one of them is back up over here being curious. What are you doing over there, Oscar? <laughs> he's, he's such a curious dog. So let's uh, see. I don't know. Last time I checked, all the plants were like still connected, although there were several. And I think one of them was loose, but it doesn't feel like it here. It feels like these are all pretty bound together. I love this bushy look, so I don't want to take it apart anyway. And it actually looks like I can reuse some of this moss. Hmm. I don't know if I want to take chances since there were there was mold in it though. I don't know if I want to take any chances, even though this looks really good. So as you can see, uh, some of your orchid roots that, that are not exposed to the light are not going to photosynthesize, so they'll be yellow and white and that's completely fine the dead ones are like the dead ones look dead like they're oh this cake is coming off the dead ones look dead see that papery dark brown mushy yeah that one came off yeah it looks like they're starting to separate now that we're removing the medium from the base of the plant So tempted to just wash this in this in the sink um, but my water is so hard and I don't have a lot of fresh water currently on hand to ensure a good enough soaking that the mineral content that is in my tap water won't build up so because I don't want to risk the buildup and not being able to clean it off quick in time for it to dry I I'm just going to try to remove as much as I can and really not worry about it because all of this is at the surface anyway. So it's long, as long as it's not in the pot, you don't have to worry too much. See, all things like this weird me out. Let me just take this off. Like this root was alive, but the base that was connected was completely dead. This was completely dead. Yeah, that was probably gonna rot eventually anyway crazy how many leaves are like retained on this plant. I would have thought 
there'd be a lot more leaves that fall from the bottom. And as you can see, there was a point where we had um, our we, um, I have my plants growing in the north window, so they became a little stretched as opposed to how compact I'm used to seeing the plant's appearance. Yeah, so that's gonna go wonderfully in there. So unfortunately, we are not going to use any of that medium, although it looks not so bad. I just don't wanna take any chances with mold because I'm gonna have to, I don't know how frequently I'm gonna have to water, to be quite honest. Um, when I moved here, summer was sort of fading out and ending. So my watering regimen was already sort of changing by the time I had my plants all in their new setups. So I really don't know how um, consistently I'm gonna be watering as we move into this summer season because it gets really hot here, guys, like 113, 120 degrees. And then with the humidity being just non-existent, I'm really curious. Thankfully, I'm not anxious about it anymore, but I'm really curious as to how this is gonna go. All right, so this is gonna be a little challenging, but what we'll do is consistently put the medium around both sides. Hmm, I wonder if I'm going to have to use a skewer for this. So we'll put the moss around because the last thing I put was bark. So put that moss in there. And I'm not really worrying about it falling because when I put the bark on top, it'll weigh down pieces of the moss and mix and mangle all with it. And again, this is why I like the use of small bark. Yeah, I may have to get a skewer. Oh no, I can squeeze my fingers in there actually. All right, so the moss is there. And now let's add in some bark layering and shake because there are crevices in the middle of the roots that I, were not that I was not able to get. And the bark will fill that in graciously. Yeah, we will have to get a skewer for this. Allow me one moment, it's right in the drawer. All right, so skewer basically allows for us to um, get that medium down in the sides so that we don't have too many air gaps. Thankfully, with um, our fowls being epiphytic, which means that they are used to growing uh, primarily on trees, but basically they don't grow in the ground or on the ground really, they grow on um, the treetops and canopies of trees make their way up and live in that diffused light. So these roots are okay with some air left in your pot. However, always take your medium into, cons excuse me, always take your environment into consideration because for me, Air pockets mean even faster dry time. Um, and I do not want to speed up any amount of dry time to be watering more than once a week. I mean, if that's your thing, knock yourself out, but I'm definitely not trying to water more than once a week. So here we go. I mean, I, I do periodically check my plants throughout the week because I don't, I don't know anyone who really doesn't. We obsess over these things, but I'm not about to make it a very, 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 very constant chore where it starts to feel like a chore and not a hobby. Because all this, I enjoy doing. We all enjoy doing. Watching repots, repotting. However, I am an person to do it out of necessity. So I'm not going to just say, oh, feel like repotting today. So let's repot. Not me, not my style. More like, oh, got to repot that guy. <laughs> and sometimes it takes quite a while to get to. So now I'm going to start being a little loose. Oh, no, no, I can still squeeze down a little more. At the top, I like to be a bit looser with the medium because I'm still going to use medium around the base of my plant. 
So I want to be very, very loose with the medium so that we can have a nice ooh, retention of humidity, but not a, so much wetness with regard to uh, stagnant moisture. Ooh, there's a rock in there. So with this, as you can see, I'm just lightly placing the bark and I'm not going to squeeze down. I'm just going to pat it to make it even. Just nice, even pats in there. Yeah, no, no squeezing, no squeezing for the top portion. So here we have a bit of an air gap. So I'm going to just let that be actually and just fill it with bark nice and lightly no compacting nice and light because the roots your roots are going to enjoy whatever setup they have already become accustomed to and if you're going to change this setup um i don't want to say that it's the best but you leverage your your results by not doing a hundred percent change so as you may have noticed i did squeeze quite a bit of moss in there for these pellets i'm really going to want them in the middle i want them to eventually fall into the pot and not risk them coming out the sides all right just a little more and as you can see with my fowls, I'm not really using the calcium because the dolomite calcium, the pelletized calcium, will harden uh, your moss and make it hydroscopic. And I've learned that the hard way. So with these, I sort of monitor them. They're not really calcium hungry, but sometimes, well, probably sometime this year, I will splurge in CalMag, which is the liquid form of calcium and magnesium for uh, plant uptake and I'll post my results because I do think that calcium is very 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 beneficial for orchids. I've seen some really good results from using it. So yeah I'm just gonna fill this bottom portion here make sure that's filled and the moss that's all throughout the pot should just eventually seep everything up there for us. And now let's move on to our house plant. So again, this is actually something that we are going to repot in bark and moss. But one thing I'm noticing, if you grow something in a north window, actually, let's give you a background really quickly. This is a department store. I believe it's a philodendron micans. Yeah, it's a micans philodendron. Bronze, I think I see the name is, in a four inch pot here. And what I've noticed is that if you grow in a north facing window, your medium will stay wet for longer because there isn't a lot of light. So the plant isn't doing a lot of work, hence, it is not taking up the water. So what I'm having, what trouble I'm having is there's not enough drainage and time for this plant that's potted in soil. And it just seems like that because the roots are fine, but it's not growing correctly. And I'm noticing that when the soil dries out, it is very compact. When I put my hand on the top of it, it's extremely, extremely... Uh-oh, my dog is running up and down the stairs. But when I put my hands on the top, it's just so compact. So we're gonna give this a chance to breathe in a mix of moss and orchid bark. And we're gonna use my regular setup of very small bark and moss, and we will use the normal setup of more bark than moss. So we'll probably do like that 70-30. 70% bark and 30% moss. So we'll take that off, not really concerned about all of it coming off because this dirt actually has fertilizer in it so we'll just take advantage of that and this is going to go in a bit of a larger pot to decrease that dry time so here is some of the mix <laughs> my sphagnum moss is sitting there in the sink because i've already taken some out and i'm you know reusing materials and 
tossing as I go. So we'll put our, yeah, I think that's a great fit in there. So we'll start with the moss at the bottom so that we create that upward motion of moisture if we ever need a reservoir at the bottom. That's pretty good there. And then we'll add our small bark in. So it just settles right into everywhere. More moss. Yep, that moss is just bouncing around and settling in with the bark as I would hope it would. And the we'll bark again. I think we have to use our skewer here. It looks like some of the roots are stopping yeah so some of the roots sometimes will stop the medium from going down if they've already already settled sort of in their spot that you're holding um that you're positioning the plant in so again we're just going to skew away and we've got some moss here so we're just gonna put some more bark again most of my mixes are, are mostly bark because i i just enjoy the drainage um, advantage with the same at the same time of having enough adequate moisture retention some more moss and now we're at the top of the plant so I'm gonna get very very light here with my mix I don't like chunks like that I like strands and pieces All right so nice and airy and now bark on top Oh my god. Boy, he's literally just sitting there whining. I don't know what's going on. I, I I have a strong belief that it might be his teeth because he's teething again. But yeah, as you can see, a lot of these videos are going to be starring, I guess, Oscar, the vocal one, and Charlie will make a cameo every now and then in the background. And there you have it. So I have my micans all potted up now. And I'm not gonna add any orchid fertilizer into this mix. Hopefully the fertilizer that's in the dirt will help the roots along for now until I can uh, purchase a standalone fertilizer for my houseplant collection. Uh, most of them seem to be doing just fine without me actually having it. Yeah, I like, I love watering. <laughs> There we go. And we're gonna fill most of that up since it's a lot of bark in here. And that is it. Wow, that was a little faster than I thought. Although this is probably gonna be a, a long video. So there we have it, our uh, four plants potted up. We have our philodendron micans, our phalaenopsis uh, pulcherima variation marmorata with the that the lovely foliage love it oh i can't i love spring because everything just starts really uh vigorously growing in spring and this was this is one of those plants so i can't wait uh no id from most likely whole foods one of my favorite place to buy orchids and our sogo vivian oh let me put that down there our variegated sogo vivian and that's all Please feel welcome to share your tips and tricks about how you repot since tis, tis the season, uh, seriously. And the more I'm walking around, the more I'm seeing um, what needs to be done because now everything's moving and not moving and everything's happening very fast. So you just want to make sure you get ahead of everything. And again, be sure to share what you know with everyone, um, especially in our uh, orchid going community, since we have such a tiny niche I'm seeing um, in this in this plant world. But I'll put my social media handles up on the screen, uh, which soon will also involve TikTok. But for now, it's just Facebook and Instagram. And with that, see you all in the next video.